Well, it's certainly no dull following Norwich City, is it? QPR 2, Norwich City 2. A really weird game to review this because QPR before today, maybe still even, the worst home form um, in the division. And yet going into it, I think I would have said I would have taken a point. I think they've been really good under Marti uh, Sifuentas. On paper, like the squad's pretty decent. Over the last month, their results have been decent. One of those games where you just feel like keep the momentum going and you go into a week where you've got two home games, two winnable home games. Um, let's just keep the, the, the kind of forward momentum going. And now sitting here, having picked up a point, I feel a little bit disappointed and we'd gone a goal down in the game. Um, the opening goal through Jack Colback, I'd kind of highlighted him in the preview video and said, like, you know, he's been about donkeys, hasn't he, Jack Colback? But a, a player with a bit of quality, it was a relatively easy finish. I think Angus Gunn might look at the goal and be slightly frustrated. It was one of those where Norwich had looked a little bit stodgy um, in the opening 20 minutes and QPR took a lead, probably deserved. Um, and at that moment in time, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of questioning the starting eleven a little bit. I think we'd said, hadn't we, the the big decision for, um, for, for Wagner to make with the injury to Shane Duffy was whether he dropped McLean into centre-back um, and kind of replace a, a midfielder there or whether it would just be a, a simple um, switch Duffy out Hanley in. So it was Hanley and Gibson. And I think I, I read a stat earlier that said that already this season, Norwich have had 10 different centre-back pairings. And that's remarkable, um, considering where we are in the season. So it was another different one today in, in, in Gibson and Hanley. And I thought they looked a little stodgy in, in the opening 20 minutes. I think we were struggling somewhat to kind of um, get up to speed. And, and and, and Johnny Rowe hadn't started, so it was um, it was Ashley Barnes that that started um, in the number kind of ten role, much like um, we we had um, in that kind of last twenty minutes against um, Coventry um, last week. So not ideal. Go into um, go into the break one nil down, and you know everything is to, um, it, we're up against it at this point. Out we come. Kenny McLean, lovely goal, lovely, well worked corner. Um, reminded me slightly, if you remember his goal, I think it was his goal um, away at Millwall um, last year, off of a corner, well worked. Gabby Sarah into McLean, lovely finish. Happy days, one one, and we were building at that point. 60 minutes on the clock. Josh Sargent, his seventh goal in 13 league games. It's a brilliant, brilliant move. Um, comes from the right-hand side. It's a little faint from Gabby Sarah. Um, Jack Stacey picks up the ball. It's a delicious cross. And, um, and, and up rises Josh Sargent for yet another league goal. And God, we missed him this season. You know, he was out for four months. If there was one player to get injured long term that you don't want, it's probably either Josh Sargent or Gabby Sarah. It happened to Josh Sargent. His minutes, his goal per minute ratio is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, can very much put him in the in the bracket of one of the best, if not the best strikers in this division. Once again, proving that with a brilliant header. 2-1. You're thinking, right, let's kick on. Let's put it out of sight. And, and, the, and I think the moment that will frustrate Norwich fans are the substitutions from David Wagner. And look, we're fickle. We're football fans. Of course we're fickle. Last week we were praising his substitutions and the way that he was able to turn the game against Coventry, particularly um, Ashley Barnes coming in, got the well, we, we, you know, got the two assists against Coventry. This time it just felt a little bit momentum killing. Sargent, probably best player of the match brought off um you've br brought off jack stacy now i'm recording this before we've heard from him um it may well be an injury i hope it's not um but that felt like the strange one stacy off Sorensen in at right back just felt really peculiar it has to be an injury surely you don't do that if jack stacy's fit he just had the assist um so, so, so that kind of put us on on the back foot slightly. That was a strange one. Um, Christian Fasnack came on for Johnny Rowe, and then the other concern from this is Johnny Rowe. So comes on, and within 14 minutes, is hobbling back off. Now he's missed a couple of games in the last month through the broken hand that he picked up 
against Leeds United. He was back in the fold today. He didn't start, clearly um, not fully up to match fitness. Otherwise, he would be starting. And now he's gone off with what looks to be a hamstring niggle. So really, really frustrating um, for Johnny Rowe, particularly with this period that we've talked about so much get, that we're going into, two big games at Cow Road next week. When we were leading, um, we were just, se- you know, we were seventh um, in the table at that time. We were only behind, um, you're going into the playoffs based off of goal difference. We've now dropped down to eighth. Look, it's still very tight and we're still only two points um, behind Sunderland in sixth. But it felt like an opportunity today. We snuck ahead through a really, really good spell of play, you know, 25 minutes where we were looking really decent. And I've just looked at the substitutes and gone, Oh, you know, and I, and, I, and I do fully understand that Sargent is still coming back to, to full match speed. He's been out for a long time. You have to manage his minutes well. And I suspect the opinion on Wagner is we look comfortable. Let's try and sit on a lead. But QPR were never out of that. Um, and it just feels like a an opportunity missed somewhat it was a a fairly chaotic team come the end there I mean we finished the game with with 10 players after Johnny Rowe had gone off with the injury and we and we'd been left without substitutions but Nunez coming on um Rowe coming on Sorensen McCallum Hernandez it feels frustrating and if you're gonna bring Sargent off then surely it's a like for like change you've got Van Hoydonk sat on the bench now we don't know what Van Hoydonk is all about but you know, fresh, there's excitement around him. I'd be looking at that. With all of that being said, um, it's a point away from home against a side that are on the up. Um, And I think, you know, I do take the mindset of don't lose your away games and win your home games. Now, the next week is big. It's really big for Norwich City in in our grand scheme of kind of trying to, to scrape into the playoffs. It's Watford on Tuesday. It's Cardiff on Saturday. Two games you should be winning at home. I want to see a full strength side. Um, Hopefully the injuries um, to to, to Johnny Rowe isn't too bad. I'm hoping there's no injury um, to Jack Stacey, who looked far better in that game today. Really keen to hear your thoughts. I thought for for half an hour in that second half, we looked good. We were knocking it about well. The move for the second goal was beautiful. And then, again, it was one of those performances where we were consistently inconsistent, and that's been the frustration. The performances against West Brom and Coventry, there felt like a theme in the game. There felt like there was a a style to our play and and a certainty about us. That wasn't the case today. It was okay. It wasn't shocking. We haven't lost the game. But I don't think it's the type of performance that will get you into the playoffs. And slightly frustrated with David Wagner's substitutions. Let me know what you thought down in the comments section below. It's going to be an action-packed week here on TNC next week. Two games at home. Really looking forward to them. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.